Missions. Hello everyone, I'm Ophelia Marauder, and welcome back to my channel. So, today we're going to talk about the Tier 6 cruiser Pensacola. And Pensacola is a very interesting ship because a lot of people have problems with her. They find her too squishy, they find her turrets are really laggy and don't keep up with the hull, and they kind of find that they can't really do much good damage with her. And the thing about Pensacola is that it's all about kind of finding an opportunity to squeak yourself in. A lot of cruisers play this way, and Pensacola is no exception. Um, because of where we spawn in, we're in a weird spot. We really have to kind of manage our flank as best as we can, take charge of it with doing damage. And that's kind of what I'm already prepared to do in my head as I'm going, going in right now. Because of how our team is kind of choosing to disperse in the early game. That pink carrier also really doesn't give me much uh, confidence, to say the least. Uh, when I see uh, important ships like that pink it's uh, a little nerve-wracking to say the least um anyway as we're approaching in here we're gonna slow down a little bit because i don't want to charge in a lot of people at pensacola think that you're a heavy cruiser now you're no longer omaha you could take a hit well that's not the case you can not take a hit in the slightest so because of how um i'm approaching this i know there's going to be a destroyer that's going to pop up first right um, there's going to be enemies on the back side of A. It always happens every match. That's the player behavior for the match. So because of it, I am approaching A cap with a little caution. I have HE shells loaded to hit the destroyer that pops up. Most likely it's the first thing spotted because of kind of how Asashio plays. So I see my teammate going in there. And I'm going to aim and take a couple shots at Ohm that just popped up. I kind of out-rotate my front guns with my uh, turning circle. I'll get those in and throw a little more heat at the Oland. And so we get a nice little decent smack. Um, I'm going to track my shells there. You'll see me quite often I track my shells because I like to know where my hits are going and kind of to check my gunnery and whatnot. Um, I can't switch to AP there, so I'm going to fire whatever HE I had loaded at the Darren Shire. But it wouldn't be bad. I could still get a fire or something like that. So I'll get some uh, more heat going on him. And oh yeah, there it is. It's a fire. Two hits. Um, I'm loving it. So we have, he's turning broadside to us, which is nice. We're going to throw that AP out there. And we will see what it does. Double Citadel. Beautiful. And him starting a, with a third less of his health for the match is phenomenal. Um, he is going to end up feeling that. And you'll see later on in the match. He feels that throughout the whole game, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm going to throw a little extra damage out there at him. Dodge the New Mexico in the process. Um, Melfi New Mexico kind of had my number, try to have my number this whole match, and I, I had to kind of dodge him out. Um, definitely a very weak encore there on the Devonshire for a tenth of what we had earlier, but that's fine. You know, you don't always get everything you're looking for there. Um, Owen's coming back in, and unfortunately, because I don't have HE loaded, I kind of have to clear the barrels with what I've got. So I'm going to be shooting armor piercing rounds at the Oland. Normally, I'd be shooting HE, but I'd rather have some damage than no damage. And, you know, I, I want my destroyer to win the gunfight against the enemy destroyer. So, we're going to get a little more damage on him there. Um, New Mexico just took some serious damage as well. Olin's down 9k, which is good. So, if you look at where we are in the match, our carrier's pretty far forward. And he's about to ram an island. And that's not always the best. So, like, there is a strategy of pushing your carrier forward and protecting it. But this guy's not really doing it right. Um... You're going to see why in a second here, how that kind of bites him, bites him in the butt in a minute. But we're going to push in here a little bit more. We need to get in a range of things. And for the most part, the only battleship here is our Vlad of Vostok. So he really, you know, he's not really equipped to, to deal with everything that's coming in at him. So we have to kind of help him out as much as we can. Um, there is an Amalfi back there still that, and as he popped up again, I want to kind of damage him a little more. I don't like that Amalfi there because there's always a cruiser to try to hold that island down. And it works depending on what ship's there. You know, if you bring a light cruiser there, you're probably going to end up just dying on that. If you bring a heavy cruiser about win, a little more success. We get a lucky uh, turret incapacitation on the Amalfi, which I believe probably forced a DCP on him. But we're going to throw an HE salvo to follow up with that and then just do a standard kite out because this sap will do a lot of damage to us. Um, Arcuna Berti is trying to do a little bit of a torp run on the backside there. Um, we'll hit Amalfi for 6,000. Hopefully, Arcuna Berti will finish him off with torps, but I really don't see that kind of materializing throughout the match. And you'll notice really quickly here 
that there's a Chihi Destroyer that pushes through B. He's going to pop up any minute now. As we, you know, see Devonshire getting hit again for some, you know, nice chunks of damage. And Amalfi himself gets the crap smacked out of him. He's at about 400. And there it is. We got ourselves an Aviaire, which is uh, now pushing to Paulo Emilio, if you will. Um, the Our carrier. So not really the best position we could try to shoot him and help him and back off the destroyer but he's pretty slippery and for the most part we have a problem right in front of us we have a lot of firepower pushing us so it really wouldn't make much sense for us to try to you know break off and try to help him and even though you know we really don't want to lose our carrier at the same time like there is obligations we have to work on our flank and damage what we can on our flank and we can't just give up those obligations, or if we leave, it's possible that the enemy team might just push through us because they're now we're now down a ship. And we just get a citadel there on the York. So once again, we're already doing a lot of good damage towards enemies that are pushing us. So we kind of we kind of once again have our obligation. And our carrier, as I predicted, would go down. I don't think that has anything to do with him go being pink there, even though he did kind of push there in a way that he shouldn't have. But um, Enemy DD would have just either gone there or gone to the back of the map to snipe him. Wouldn't have mattered either way, uh, for the most part. That really wasn't going to be influenced by his behavior. So, now we have a destroyer back there we have to be careful of. And for the most part now, we're kind of getting pushed out of this here. But we have to make a counterplay. The north side with C is doing a darn good job of holding it there. And looks like they might even win that engagement. So, it's kind of our job to make sure that we push back in and take take a or at least hold them back or apply more pressure so i'm gonna kind of try to sneak up the flank here get some more good shots on enemy uh battleships i at this point you obviously can't see it but my finger's right over the a key and right over the d key um in case i've got to do some dodging and i have my finger just hovering over s as well so that if i have to slow down i can because i know I'm, I'm a little broadside to the enemy and i'm getting some good chunks into new mexico and at this point I would normally kind of kite back in, but I see that there's an opportunity for me to push forward and get the broadsides of these cruisers and kind of make it a little bit of a distraction here. And I was hoping that the Cunaberti might have gotten the Amalfi, and that didn't happen. And I was hoping that the Amalfi was going to stay stationary. But the Amalfi doesn't stay stationary and actually backs out and gets some good shots on me. And with the enemy carrier coming in, I throw up my AA and we're going to, you know, take down some of these aircraft. I got beautiful shots on York broadside. It gets a little hairy here for a second because York is, you know, clearly hell-bent and trying to kick my butt. And he will, in a second here, is going to get absolutely deleted. Gunnaberti knocks him down. And then Devonshire wants to pop up as the next contender. And we are going to swiftly take care of this guy. Boom. Knocks out his engine, knocks out his, you know, knocks him to the Citadel. Pretty damaged. And we're going to see if we can try to end him here real quick. Turning out just a little bit because I already know that, you know, Mexico and, and Amagi is probably going to be looking at me. Broadside Pentacles are a very juicy target. People don't like passing them up. I don't like passing up the opportunity for a kill. So I take down Devonshire. And here's where the Amalfi starts to have a little fun with me. And it's why when you leave a ship at 400 health, they become a really big threat on the field. Because, you know, they can still shoot and damage you and do all sorts of stuff like he is now. Like, I'm getting chunked. I shouldn't be. Kunaberti couldn't have fin like didn't finish him. He was just like a couple literally mouse clicks away from dying, and that never materialized. So I'm a little stuck here, and the carrier is gonna spot me. I know he's gonna spot me, so I fire anyway because it's either one way or the other for the most part. Um, leveling my guns to watch where Amalfi is, and he's right there to fire. I'm gonna wait with a reload here, see if maybe you know see what I can do. Um, I really want him dead, and sure enough, he pops up. Quick lead, quick shots, turn out a little bit more, because I want to minimize, you know, if he gets one last shot, in which he does. Pretty typical. I end up killing him. No, but he chunks me back. Got more flak coming in from the enemy battleships. Um, at this point, we've won the north part of the map, and we've kind of recovered from the Aviaire, who decided to, you know, push down the center and kill our, destroy our uh, carrier. Sorry. So, you know, that happened put more shots in new mexico i'd love to have been able to push farther forward and take out the arc royal or do some damage to him but you know you take what you can get in a match it's not necessarily about the heroics but it's about the game impact i've tanked almost a million you know potential damage at this point done 77k got two kills six citadel hits 
and, you know, taking out seven aircraft out of the match, which isn't, you know, too terribly impressive, but those seven aircraft could have been aircraft that damaged my teammate, so I'm not too terribly, you know, uh, disappointed in that performance. And we are pretty much going to end up taking all the caps here. We took care of A. It was a 6v4 with the just one of our destroyers not really doing much. The Kunaberti really wasn't being as productive as he ought to have been. And we still decided to claw our way back and claw our way through that match and end up winning it. So, um, that was pretty nice. Uh, Bismarck's got a lot of, uh, Faf Black on him already. And the carrier, I think, pops back up here in just a second. Yep. So I end up saying, you know, screw it, I'll shoot the carrier because the battleship's gonna die. Like, there's a Massachusetts and a Bayern and Schumpan and everyone else and their mother on, on, the, on the Bismarck. So, not no point kill stealing it. Asashio, which we helped run that Oland off earlier, is in a beautiful spot to get himself a Torp kill on the Amagi. And we end up, like I said, 77k. We are second on the team with 1,726 base XP. We get a kill on the, a good amount of damage on Devonshire for a kill. To clear up the Amalfi and do some other shenanigans around the map as well. Do some more damage. And walk away with a pretty good credit earning of about a quarter million. Which... Hey, I ain't complaining about that. And second most aircraft shut down the match with seven. Once again, not an impressive number, but we still did a good amount of team play by making sure we take those aircraft out of the match. All right, guys. So for how I would build Pensacola, I do it a little bit differently than most of the people do. And we're going to get straight to the captain skills here. Now, for me, I own a lot of ships. So, I have dedicated captains on all my tech tree ships built out for the ship specifically and how I like to play them. So, I'm going to show you my captain build first of what I would take. And then I'm going to show you a build for Pensacola if I was grinding up to the Des Moines for the first time. Um, so, we're going to open up the captain skills here real quick. First thing I would pick is the uh, Grease the Gear skill for the extra turret rotation. Uh, Pensacola has slow turrets and her rudder is very good. So you want to be able to have your guns keep up with your rudder for, you know, comfort's sake. And this skill really does a lot to help with that. Um, next thing I would take is focus fire training. Now, if I was going up to Des Moines, for Captain for Des Moines, I wouldn't take this. But for this build, I do because there's a lot of aircraft at that tier 6. There's carriers, there's the airstrikes that the Dutch get. There's ASW strikes and there's aviation hybrids along with your foray of catapult aircraft for spotters and fighters. I get a lot of mileage out of the skill when I play Pensacola. So I particularly pick it. There's also some uh, carriers that are no longer available for sale that really will damage Pensacola a lot. Enterprise is one of them. She has armor piercing bombs. She's a tier 8 carrier and she will absolutely flatten Pensacola. Likewise, there's another ship called the uh, Lowenhart. It's a German tier 6 aircraft carrier that's a premium, and it also is extremely strong. And its HE bombs even rival some of that of tier 8 and 10 carriers, and it's very powerful, and it can beat the crap out of you. So this, along with some of my uh, consumable choices that you guys saw me playing with, I really like getting my mileage out of this. Also, it makes my depth charge aircraft come back faster, so if I have to strike a sub, it's just a little more convenient for me. So I like having this on there. The next skill that I would pick up is Superintendent for the extra consumables for um, defensive fire is very useful in conjunction with your focus fire training and I really just love doing that. I also like the extra catapult fighter because it just gives you that extra time of aircraft in the air kind of covering and looking over what you have going on. Um, the next skill that I would take would be concealment expert. I Obviously, stealth is important, so this is pretty much a bit of a no-brainer. And then I would swing down to Adrenaline Rush for the improved reload as you take damage. As you saw in the battle I played, when I was pretty low towards the end of the match, I had 12.5 second reload, and that's really strong. Very strong indeed, and I love having that on my Pensacola. So I'd rather take this instead. And from here, I would go a little differently, once again, than most people would go for a dedicated build for Pensacola. So for myself, if I had more captain skills, the first thing I do is I pick up heavy AP shells. So the reason why I would go with heavy AP shells is because that 5% extra damage is really, really nice. And as it'll show right here, it adds about 230 points to your shell damage. Now that might not seem like a lot, but when you hit a citadel, it makes 
all the world of difference. So I would definitely take heavy AP shells on this. And then to equalize and kind of uh, match that da extra damage to the AP shells, I would take Demolition Expert for the improved fire chance. And as you can see here, it moves your fire chances up to 17. Um, this is also has flags on there as well, so your base chance is 15, so this is, would be 16, and the two flags is, seven, is uh, sorry, 14, so the skill is 15, and then 16 and 17 for the flags, respectively. So because of that, I would just love to have this on there, and I would probably put that on next. Um, after this, I would stack up on some quality of life tier 1 skills to really kind of make Pensacola more comfortable. So I would first go with Last Stand because it removes a lot more burden off of my DCP consumable as your damage control party. So the less that your steering gears get knocked out, the easier it is for you to kind of maneuver and do what you need to do with that. So I love doing that. You know, not being able to have to repair because I can kind of maneuver out of the way, go dark, and then repair when I'm dark so that I don't have to worry about getting set on fire as soon as my damage control goes down because I was using it for my rudder. So once again, just a phenomenal quality of life skill for this ship. Um, next thing I would do is pick Gun Feeder. So because of the length of your reload, um, cutting it in half is phenomenal. So if it's 15 seconds, you can get down to about 7.5. And, and at 12.5 seconds, it's going to be maybe about 6 seconds towards the end of the match. So you're really going to see... Um, just kind of, I guess, a general use out of it throughout the most of the battle. Um, my captain that went up to Des Moines had this skill on there when I was on Pensacola. And I loved having it on there. It's not on here now. I really want to have it back on there when I get more skills for Pensacola. But I really just love having this skill. It's very good for a lot of long reload cruisers. We're going to cover more on this channel about them. But seriously, this skill is great. And a lot of long reloads, definitely pick it up. And next thing I would pick up... Um, would be consumable specialist. Now, instead of picking up uh, incoming fire alert, which tells you about incoming salvos, or instead of going with this as it all together and picking a priority target, one of the things about Pensacola is that you know you're going to get shot at. No one's just not going to shoot at you, right? So because of that, it's your job to keep your head on a swivel to make sure everyone around you is identified as a threat. Who is shooting at me? Where are they at? And have eyes on everything. And of course there's going to be that random target that hits you and you weren't looking. Or you weren't very aware of it. And that's kind of your fault. If you will. And that's just kind of where you get better as a player by identifying things. So I really don't feel the need when I could improve my output and performance of my Pensacola. To really take take priority target. Because this kind of for me becomes a little bit of a crutch depending on the ship. Especially at a tier where I should be able to manage my threats. And manage the... Uh, the impact that I have kind of coming in on my ship and the same thing goes with the coming fire alert where if people are aiming at me most likely they're shooting at me and by that extension if I know I'm detected then I know I'm going to get shot at so I much rather would kind of just skip these two because it's kind of telling me the obvious I'm being aimed at I'm being shot at in a ship that has a reputation for being kind of squishy so it, it's this is kind of just like reaffirming what I already know uh, in terms of how I play my ship so I would go once again with the gun feeder and then pick up the consumable enhancements because of the 10% reload reduction to my uh, defensive fire and my fighter. So this also helps me just be a little stronger with my uh, damage output from defensive fire, which I would much rather have when it comes to what I'm doing on the field with my Pensacola for my, my ship. Once again, this is a bit of a hybrid build between my guns and my anti-aircraft, and I'd like to have this there to complement the improvements that I once again I'm getting out of focus fire training with a reduce to the airstrike for the subs and with the improvements to the uh, shell explosion by getting another uh, flak burst and by uh, increasing my priority sector reinforcement by 25% so it lasts longer and I'd love to have that last longer with more defensive fire coverage which is why it's better to have it come back up sooner so um, this is, once again, a dedicated captain build. We're going to quickly jump to Des Moines' captain build before I jump to the modules and signal flags I'd put on Pensacola to round out how I would build her for the maximum performance I could get out of her. But to start here on Des Moines, um, this is, once again, a captain I would take with me from Tier 6 at Pensacola to Tier 10 and not leave on Pensacola. So I would start by taking uh, Grease the Gears first for the extra turret rotation. And then I would take uh, Priority Target. Now, in comparison to my Tier 6, where I know I'm getting shot at, at Tier 10, there's a lot of ships that, because of their firing arcs, can fire from behind islands that, you know, 
you really don't think are doing so, especially battleships that can, ha when they put their spotter up or have range mod, which some people do that at the tier, even though sometimes it's not the best way to play your battleship at tier 10, there'll be random shells coming at you from God knows where, and it gets super frustrating. So priority target is the second skill I take, so I know how many people are kind of focusing me down, and that tells me if I should duck behind an island or not with this, with the ship. Um, next skill I'm going to take is superintendent for you know the extra consumables uh at this tier there's a tier consumable called radar which is very helpful there's you also get a heal on a tier 10 cruiser which is nice as well but i would take this on on it next and then i would take concealment expert for the extra detection then i would come over here for radio location this tells you where the nearest enemy is to your ship it's very helpful to have on your boats and even at tier six it's super kind of super helpful but once again i play my pensacola differently so i really don't need this on my ship specifically but when if I was running accounts again, running a captain to, to tier 10 with Des Moines, I want to have this skill on my ship. Next thing I would take is Adrenaline Rush, and the reason why I would take it after radio location is because radio location is the more expensive skill, I'd like to get that out of the way, and next I would go with Adrenaline Rush for, as I take damage, once again, I reload faster, and Des Moines already has a phenomenal reload up here at 4.8 seconds when you have the reload mod on her, so when you just get your Adrenaline Rush going, you can get down to like 3 seconds with your reload and just put out so much damage. So once again, no matter what, it's just too valuable of a skill not to take on this ship. Um, the next thing I would take is the consumable enhancements for extra consumable duration time. And this affects the hydro and radar on Des Moines. It doesn't necessarily affect the most of the consumables on Pensacola, but as you go to New Orleans and up, you start to want to take hydro instead. So this skill uh, starts to benefit you. And especially when you get to tier eight, where you start taking radar on your ships with, with Baltimore and with Buffalo. Once again, consumable enhancements is just a phenomenal skill to have on your ship. Uh, the next one I would take would be incoming fire alert. Uh, once again, random battleships at this tier will just shoot shells at you that you have no idea where they're coming from because they're hiding from the opposite side of the map and they have rounds coming in from 25 kilometers out. And with this battle, as you saw, we're only dealing with ranges of about 17 kilometers. And you may think, oh, well, you know, the extra di distance from 17 to 25 isn't that impactful. But when you get in that situation, you'll realize how impactful that really can be, especially when something's shooting over an island and isn't spotted. And if that's a battleship, you know, it can become really brutal, especially at tier 10, where uh, the shells hurt cruisers a little harder than they do at the lower tiers because of how they're designed. So incoming fire alert's really going to give you a lot of mileage for Des Moines because it's going to make it feel a lot more comfortable. And next is gun feeder. Now you may be wondering, well, if my reload is so quick at like 4.8 seconds with reload mod on my Des Moines, well, why would you bother with this? Well, in some situations, unless you just have to, it's good to kind of switch your shells out on the fly. So um, it, there's a bit of situational awareness that's required to obviously use gun feeder on such a fast reloading cruiser like a Des Moines. But at the end of the day, um, you have to make, make those decisions whether you want to clear the guns and just fire shells and do some damage or take their gamble, switch to the, the better shell type and then do more damage with it. Sometimes that extra reload for the shell switch means that the enemy gets away. But for the most part, what I like to do is use the shell switch in case I have to push a rock and I know there's going to be an enemy out there. Let's say I've been shooting at a battleship and then I go to, you know, push forward and I know there's going to be a DD there. So I throw up my, you know, I switch my shells and throw up my hydro. Um, if I do that, then I'm already ready and prepared. So I, it, it depends on your behavior. But I like having this on there, and it would not hurt to have Gun Feeder on Pensacola or any of the other ships running up the line from Tier 6 to Tier 10. Um, anyway, that's just, once again, this is a build I would take in this order that I would pick to go from Pensacola to Des Moines. Um, and not something that I would do as a dedicated build on my Pensacola. Once again, just making sure that's clear, because if you take the build I have on Pensacola or I would recommend to Des Moines, you're going to have a very... I'd say suboptimal experience with your Des Moines, Des Moines if you do that. So I would, once again, leave this build particularly on a Pensacola with a dedicated captain. Um, he's also got a nice little cool uh, jacket with a uh, black raincoat on there, which is kind of neat. And then going for the equipment on my Des Moines, um, I go with main armament mod 1. Once again, it's a very big no-brainer uh, module improvement because it gives me uh, less of a chance of my main battery getting incapacitated. Next, I would go with damage control system mod one, reducing a little bit more of the risk of fire and flooding to my ship. 
Uh, it's kind of nice because, you know, that torpedo has a little less chance of flooding. That one eight random stray HG shell that sets you on fire has a little less chance of doing that to you. I like it. I take it. That's just me. Um, there is nothing wrong with taking engine room protection, or if you want to, like, really lean into building a dedicated ship, taking defensive fire mod 1 or hydro mod 1 if you want to play Pensacola with hydro or defensive fire. Uh, neither of these are bad, but I just like having that extra survivability, so that's just kind of my personal thing there. Um, next, I'm going to explain also kind of the other options you kind of have with this build. Um... But first, it is just taking aiming system mod 1 for the improvement to your dispersion. So your shells cluster a little more to the center of your dispersion ellipse. And then um, it kind of buffs your secondaries, but that's not really a big deal. Like, Pensacola secondaries will be relevant, like, once every 100 battles. So, you know, don't really worry about them. Um, that being said, there is arguments for taking main battery mod 2, once again, because your turrets are so slow. I really wouldn't. I truly wouldn't do that. I value my damage over my comfort to a point. So I really wouldn't want to put my uh, main battery mod 2 on here for the rotation. Uh, next is secondary battery mod 1. I would never take this on a Pensacola. It's just not worth it. It's a cruiser. It's very squishy. You would get very little use out of this. And it would be mostly be towards the end of the game. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's ever been worth it on a Pensacola, and I don't think it ever will be. Or from pretty much 90% of the cruisers, for that matter, you're never going to get any use at a secondary battery mod 1. So if you're playing a cruiser, just ignore that this even exists. <coughs> Next is AA uh, Guns Mod 1. So the thing about AA Guns Mod 1 is that while it helps with the priority sector, I just don't feel the need to lean into my AA that heavy. Even if I were to go really crazy and take other AA skills and, you know, throw this on there with defensive fires mod and all that, like, I don't, I really just don't see it being very valuable, so I really wouldn't take it. This is a slot where you kind of get a lot of utility to pick from in the game, and you really have to make a, a good choice, and for the most part, this is just kind of going to be your shining choice unless your turrets are so bad, which you could with Pensacola if you really feel like doing it, but I, I really would go with this one more so. And then my last skill, uh, captain, uh, not captain skills, um, modules to pick from. So damage control system modification two, you could do. Um, the improvements to your fire, fire and flooding recovery is nice, but cruisers already started out with a 30 second recovery time. So I really wouldn't dedicate a whole module to this at this tier exclusively because I don't really see with my rudder shift and my using the propulsion mod, I really don't have to worry this much about my damage you know being you know the dot damage with the flooding and fires so i personally wouldn't pick it but if you did there's no shame in it there's nothing wrong with picking that on pensacola and it feels like you get more mileage out of it then i would encourage you then to use it um propulsion mod one is what i use this improves my entire time to take reach full engine power when you're accelerating by 50 percent. so you go you accelerate pretty quick and with that really good rudder shift uh, Pensacola can kind of turn on a dime if she gets caught in a really bad situation. So I like this. It gives me so much more ability. Um, steering Gears Mod 1, I feel, on Pensacola specifically, is a little redundant. Because while I could steer more and have um, reduced the time it takes my rudder to articulate, it doesn't improve my rudder's angle of articulation. So that means, you know, how far over it's turning. It just makes the mechanical turning time faster. So, because of that, I don't really feel like Rudder Shift Mod 1 is just useful in on this ship specifically. And then there's Airstrike Modification 1, and like, you could use it. I mean, you could, but then again, this is just so much better. There's, right now in the game, the only ship that really gets really good use out of this are pretty much the Dutch, because the Dutch have their airstrikes on their ship, and... Unless you were really building like a dedicated ASW cruiser, which I'm sure you could possibly do on some of the cruisers that they have now that they're they're kind of doing more enhancements to subs as they're testing them. Pensacola is the last cruiser out of every cruiser I own that I would ever put in any submarine warfare build on. So I really don't think it's worth putting Airstrike Mod 1 on a Pensacola. I'd rather go with the Propulsion Mod 1 and keep my engine and my maneuverability up. And then once again, for my consumables, I'm taking defensive fire like I've talked about before. 
And even with this, you know, 40 second action time, 76 second reload time. I love it. Five consumable charges. And if I had the skill that removes 10%, it would be around uh, 63, I think, or something like that for the reload. So even so, just phenomenal. And when your defensive fire is down, you can always layer it with your fighter, which is up for 60 seconds. So with the proper build, your fighter is basically in the air as long as your defensive fire is down. So you always can have anti-aircraft defense on your ship ready to go. And it's really kind of cool to have. I like it. I like doing that. So that's why I do it. Simple as that. Um, I like having a little bit of AA support for my team. And then to move over to the signal flags for Pensacola, what I would do to kind of just round out the build to give me that little extra bit of performance improvement, I would start out with November Echo Seta 7, which for the rest of these, I'm just going to kind of call them by their abbreviation of the first letter of each one because some of these names can get really long. This is the just kind of known as the AA flag that improves my AA, and this just gives me that one little extra bit of performance out of my uh, anti-aircraft guns. Next is uh, IXR, which improves my... Uh, shell uh, fire chance by another one percent which once again uh, compounds into this number that we saw earlier of uh well what's seen here is 16 percent but um because i don't have demolition expert on to make it 17 but this is once again one of the flags i take to kind of raise that fire chance up another one is vl for that extra little fire chance and obviously i don't have any torpedo bombers on this so it's not going to do that flooding ability but the he is always really nice to have when you have great fire chance on it because the fires you set to kind of tell enemies to go away and you know make them burn down is lovely love this love these two flags in conjunction they're a very strong combination uh next is november foxtrot once again this kind of helps with the reload of the defensive fire and the fighter consumables by making them shorter i like it i put this on my ship next is sm for the improved uh ship speed then jyb for the flooding recovery time this is why i would take this instead of using the uh the module in slot four instead of you know reducing them through that i'd rather just put the flags on and instead leave up the module space open for my engine like i was talking about next is uh iy for the fire extinguishing time being 20 percent less and next jc the beautiful anti-detonation flag as it's also known um, Juliet Charlie is just a great signal because re it removes the chance of your magazine module having a random chance to detonate until it actually, you know, gets to zero. But even once it gets to zero, it still won't detonate, which is really, really nice. So I love it. I love this flag. It's a great flag. Anybody who knows me knows that this flag is like, I'd make sweet, sweet love to this flag. But anyway... That is all I got for the Tier 6 American Heavy Cruiser Pensacola. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and make sure to hit the bell icon so you know next time when I go to post a video. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you all next time.